Hey, loved ones, it's me again. I think we have this false narrative that we're supposed to, with all the spiritual work that we do, we're supposed to have an ego death. We're supposed to be separated from our ego. But I think that's wrong. And in my experiences, it's really served me to look at it as more of a quest of an ego befriending. Osho says that your ego is your Siamese twin. If you think about it, you're in the womb for nine months, almost 10 months, everything that you needed is provided for you. Sound is muffled, light is blocked. The nutrients are, are put directly into your little fetal body through this umbilical cord. The womb is everything for you at this point, right? It's your entire space time, it's your entire life. The nine months is your entire life, that's it. Your whole life. You've been in this one womb apartment. <laughs> that's so bad. And then one day, contractions and you are ripped and pulled and pushed and contracted from the only home you have ever known and you're held upside down and you're dangled in air and you see light for the first time and you and you hear sounds unmuffled for the first time and you see uh, a doctor and he slaps you and he cuts part of your body off and you're cold for the very first time. Think about the last time you were cold. Think about being cold right now. We all hate being cold. Humans hate being cold. Think about being cold for the first time. That had to suck. <laughs> so your ego pops out of your consciousness at the moment of your birth. It's the exact same age as you. It pops out of your consciousness and goes, Makad, yo, I got this. You are never gonna be that shocked again. I mean, be, think about it. Being birthed is so shocking. You're being ripped from the only home you've ever known. It's almost like a death. Birth is so shocking. I think the way that we cope with coming into the world in the first place is that part of our psychology, part of our, part of our being is split and it becomes this shield so that we can slowly take in the information, slowly take in the experience of, okay, that's over. And now what is this? Otherwise I think it would be too shocking. And I think that's what the ego really is, right? It's there for you to protect you. It's just trying to protect you. That's initially how it started. That's how the relationship started. And then as you get older, what? These little kids are running around, they're playing with somebody and there's nobody there. It's called an imaginary friend, right? Well, what do you think that is? And then as you get older, it's not cute to have an imaginary friend anymore, so you don't have one, right? And then that becomes the ego, that becomes this other voice that you shouldn't listen to, you should talk down to, you, you, should, you should put it aside. Yeah, it was there for your protection, but it's not so useful anymore, so maybe we just, we just throw that aside, right? We put that aside. And as you grow up, if you have an imaginary friend, then, then that, that's a problem, right? <laughs> but if we identify that imaginary friend when we were children as the ego, then we, we, we know, we can identify that it's always been there, right? It's always been there. Birth childhood as we got older and understood the concept of what this thing was over here that was making decisions and barking in your ear it's another part of you that was there to protect you in the first place but you stopped listening to it you started to denigrate it you started to regard its opinion even though it's protective as something that you should not even entertain but the problem is it's one third of you you have the animal you have your spiritual self, and you have the ego. The animal has to eat. The animal thinks with the reptilian brain. The spirit wants what the spirit wants. It, it, it's, it's in cosmic alignment with the universe. And the ego is the thing that has protected you from all that bullshit and gathered up all that trauma. It's had to hold it. And then its opinion is formed based on what it's been engaged in in your life. It's been the person, it's been the person holding the fucking trash for you. Of course it has loud opinions and sometimes ones that aren't good for you that don't serve you, but here's how you fix that. If you think your ego's working against you, it is because you are against your ego. And how does it respond? It only knows how to respond this way. But you're in charge. You are not the egos, the ego is yours. And your ego is inextricable from your existence. So what happens when you don't listen to the ego? It's still there. 
it's still there. It's just loud, and now it wants to do this to you. It wants to, it wants to interject its voice in places where it may not belong in your relationship, at work. Your ego is yours. Why would you want anything of yours to die? Why would you want to kill a part of yourself? So I invite you to an idea. The next time that your ego is mouthing off, and you know it's not you, have a seat, invite your ego in, have a conversation, say, what do you want to say? And then your ego is going to say what it wants to say. Oh, she doesn't love you. And blah, 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 blah. And you should have done this. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. That person talked down to you. And you shouldn't let them talk. Whatever. All that. And then once they're heard, once you hear them out, you realize how pretty much none of that shit means anything. But they were heard. You allowed your protective self to be heard. And guess what? Now all of a sudden you have all this energy that you freed up from the ego. You're the one who gives the ego the energy. You're the one who gives it life force. So if you keep ignoring your ego, it's just gonna take up more of your life force. If you befriend it, <laughs> then you can take that life force back peacefully. Or say, hey, you know what? I do want my ego at this meeting. I do want my ego here at this party or blah, 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 blah. And I'm gonna let that ego shine. I'm gonna let him play. I'm gonna let him be who he wants to be for tonight or for, for this meeting or whatever the case is but he's gonna do it in the way that I give him energy and power to do so because my ego is mine. And I cannot kill it. So I might as well work with it. Deconstruct your ego. Ask it questions. Invite it in, invite it for, for coffee, for tea. Hear it out. It's just trying to protect you in the best way that it knows how. And once you've heard it out, befriend it. Your ego is not something to get mad at. It's something to acknowledge and let go. All right, I know quarantine is getting crazy. I love you guys. Thank you guys for staying in the house. I appreciate it. Wash your hands.